Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the How Do I series from the Emily Post Institute. My name is Daniel Post Senning and I'll be your host today. My co-host Lizzie Post and I flipped a coin to see who would do today's talk. She woke up this morning with a sore neck and um, was worried about her ability to engage the camera effectively. So you've got me for one more week, but I really hope that Lizzie Post will be back with us next week and taking the next episode of the How Do I series. But she wanted me to, to mention a few things. Our topic today is about thank you notes. And Lizzie and I are co-hosts of the podcast Awesome Etiquette. We are also co-authors on the 19th edition of Emily Post Etiquette. And there are very few moments in life where Lizzie and I butt heads, where we have a disagreement about something. And we were recording an episode of the Awesome Etiquette podcast, and we had a, a little argument off camera. We were recording a, a postscript segment about thank you notes, the topic of today's How Do I series. And we realized that we each used a slightly different structure for writing thank you notes. And we both felt really confident that our structure was a, a, a good structure to be teaching. And... Um, we, we managed to resolve our differences and we came to the conclusion that we actually had both had pretty good structures for writing thank you notes. And it was a, a learning moment for me that I've incorporated into my teaching when I teach business etiquette seminars and when I'm giving instruction on how to write thank you notes. And I like to acknowledge this little, this little internal dispute here at the Emily Post Institute when I teach about this topic because it, it really reminded me that there are a lot of good ways to do these things, that there are some traditional etiquette skills, there are are some, some things that we think of as rules for good etiquette, but it's also important to remember that, that there is some latitude, there is some play here. So I'm going to be talking some at the start of today's talk about the structure for writing a good thank you note, the reasons that you might want to write thank you notes, why you might invest the time in handwriting a thank you note. But I also just like to say that if you have a way that you like to do it, if there is a structure for writing a thank you note that you learn from someone really important to you or that you've adopted or have developed as a strategy or an approach or a technique, I want to encourage you to continue to do that. I wouldn't ever want to, um, to let the best be the enemy of the good and to try to imply that there's a standard that's not being met because there are so many ways to do these things well. And what's really important is the, the art and the act of expressing gratitude. It's important in so many ways. Here at the Emily Post Institute, we talk about the heart of good etiquette being, being about building relationships that that we don't think of etiquette as being simply rules or manners, but we think of etiquette as, as really impacting the quality of our relationships and also being about awareness, being about consideration, respect, and honesty, being about the way that we teach each other, the way that we treat each other, and how what we do impacts the quality of the lives that we live. A theme that I really like to develop around etiquette is that etiquette is often thought of as a, a tool for assessing or judging someone else's behavior, but I think of it as most impactful and uh, most beneficial when approached as a, a strategy for self-improvement and a way to evaluate yourself. Usually you're the person who you have standing with to address bad behavior or good behavior. And that's really the place I like to focus the discussion. So gratitude is important for relationships. It's important for growing, building, and supporting healthy relationships. It's also really important for our internal mental state. The, the rewards that are there to be reaped from adopting an attitude of gratitude or from expressing gratitude are great. There is a book that I love to recommend called 365 Thank Yous uh, about the experience of a man who wrote and committed to writing a thank you note every day for a year and the impact that that had on his life. And when he started the project, he really expected it to have a, a material impact on his life. He started this project when his life was at a low ebb, both personally, professionally, and psychologically. And while at the end of this year of really intentionally looking for gratitude and expressing gratitude, those, those material conditions had changed. What was remarkable for him was how it impacted him internally, how the process of looking for things to be thankful for and really expressing that thanks and making it a practice to express and share that thanks really changed the way he saw the world, the way he felt about himself. So... I also like to share that. I think thank you notes are, are a real opportunity, and they're an opportunity both to improve relationships, but also to improve our own internal state. And if you approach thank you notes as an opportunity and not as an obligation, I think they can be a really powerful tool in life. So when are the moments to really seize the opportunity to take a thank you to the next level or to that level where you're investing the time and the intention to, to write something down in your own handwriting and 
be sure that it gets physically delivered to someone else, whether that's in person or most commonly through the post. I know they call it snail mail, but if you put a stamp on it and give it to your postman, put it in the mailbox at your office, put it in the mailbox at your home, it's likely to get to that person if they're nearby within a day or two, if they're on the other side of the country, usually within the week. And this is remarkable. The, there is a service out there that for, for pennies, for a fraction of a dollar, will physically take something that you've written and deliver it to someone else. It's a, it's a remarkable service. And when you decide to do that, it says something to someone. The medium becomes part of the message in this world of digital communication, in this world where we have so many communication options in front of us, making the decision, making the choice to handwrite something, put a, put a stamp on it, find out someone's address, put that address on an envelope and get it in the mail so that it reaches them. Um, really says something. The medium becomes part of the message. If my Uncle Peter were giving this talk, he's been teaching about business etiquette for 15 years, he would say, would you rather be deleted or remembered? Oftentimes that's going to be the only piece of handwritten mail someone gets all week, maybe all month, maybe even all year. So the medium does become part of the message. When do you want to make that choice? To not just write the email thanks to someone, to Maybe not even pick up the phone, but to, to go that extra mile of writing something down so they have that physical, tangible reminder that this really mattered to you. Um, one of the most obvious opportunities is when someone's given you a gift that you haven't had an opportunity to thank them for in person. So when I do word association games with the word etiquette with audiences that I'm teaching, writing thank you notes often comes up as someone's immediate association with the very concept of etiquette or manners. And Oftentimes the place where that practice is, is learned is when we're young, when we've received a gift from a grandparent who doesn't live in the same town as us. And the practice of writing that grandparent a thank you note when you've received a gift in the mail or writing a, a friend or a family member a thank you note when you've received a gift in the mail is about that practice of you haven't had a chance to thank them in person, so you write down that thanks and send it back to them. And it serves a couple of purposes. It lets someone know that that gift was received. They don't have to wonder about whether it even got to you. And it's an expression of gratitude. It has both a practical and, um, and a gratitude purpose, but it also lets them know that gift was received. So if someone's given you a gift that you haven't thanked them for in person, it's also, uh, if there's a real opportunity in in life, if someone has uh, given you uh, an interview for a job, a position, a promotion, if they've interviewed you in person in particular, taking that opportunity to write them a handwritten note is really recommended. The, the final one that I like to think of is if someone has hosted you in their home, particularly if you've stayed as a house guest, if you've spent more than a night in someone's home, the idea of writing them a thank you note I think is really important. You might write someone a thank you note if they've even cooked you a meal. Uh, particularly if you know someone in a, a professional context and they've invited you to their home for a meal or for a dinner, I would consider writing a thank you note um, for, that, for that act, for that act of generosity. So house guests, uh, if you've received a gift that you haven't had a chance to thank someone for in person or for major professional opportunities, particularly if someone's interviewed you for a job, those are the, the obvious opportunity moments that would trigger in my mind that, that little voice that says, you know, this is a, a, a chance to, to really let someone know how much you appreciated what they've done for you. So what does that thank you note look like? What is, that, what is the structure of that thank you note? And this is where Lizzie and I had our, had our little debate. And it, 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 it can really look like a couple of different things. I want to give you a Mad Libs version, a, a very simple structure for writing a thank you note. Uh, you want it to be brief. Oftentimes thank you notes are written on foldover cards or I really like the correspondence card, a little four by seven note card that doesn't even fold over if that's part of your social or professional stationery. It's a great choice for a thank you note. So the very size of the stationery that these are most often sent on really gives you some indication of the content of the message. It's not going to be long. It's not going to be a full letter. This isn't a full sheet or even a half sheet. It's not something you're likely to write on the back of. So you want to keep it brief. Three to four sentences is plenty. And having that idea in mind is going to make it more likely that you actually do it the next time it occurs to you to write a thank you note. So you're going to start with a salutation. The most formal is dear in someone's name. Uh, dear and title in someone's name, but oftentimes thank you notes are a little more personal. They're a little more informal. So just dear in someone's name. You can even just put someone's name at the top, but you definitely want to start with a salutation. You might even consider putting a, a date in the upper right-hand corner. Someone might save this note. It might be something that they tuck in a desk drawer. I know I have a desk drawer down here that's absolutely full of thank you notes. In fact, I have to 
put the new ones in and then press it down to get it to close because when I clean out my desk, I can't bring myself to clean out this particular desk drawer. So date on the top right corner, start with a salutation, comma, a space. The first line can be just a simple thank you for the thing itself. Thank you so much for X, Y, or Z. Second sentence, the only original thought you're really responsible for in this letter, say something that connects personally to the particular thing that you're thanking for. So thank you so much for having me over for dinner. It was so lovely to finally meet your family that I've heard so much about. Something in particular about the thing that you're thanking for. Dear Grandma, thank you so much for sending me that sweater. I love the color that you chose and the pattern that you used. I can tell that something specific about the thing. If there's a follow-up action or some, some future reference that is relevant, I am looking forward to seeing you when you come back from Florida this summer. What, whatever, the, um, whatever the future action or the next step might be makes a great third sentence. And then I like to conclude the note with a second statement of thanks. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Something that, that reaffirms or repeats that thank you that you started the note with. You can conclude with your name on the bottom right-hand corner, sincerely, and your name is the most formal option. It is always appropriate. For business correspondences, you also have options like all the best, best, best regards, even just best. You can even just write your name, but I, I, I like to have some sort of closing before the signature for personal correspondence, warmly, affectionately, yours truly, even with love, are all nice options to really warmly close a thank you note. So now you've got your very simple, basic structure for a thank you note. Date at the top right, dear or the person's name, but some sort of salutation that opens the note. Then you're going to have a first sentence that's a, a statement of thanks, a second sentence that's an original thought, a third sentence that's a follow-up option or next action if appropriate, and then a closing reaffirmation or restatement of thanks, a closing, sign your name, and you're done. My final tip for writing thank you notes is think about them ahead of time enough so that you get some stationery that you like to write with. If you write them professionally, keep that stationery in your desk drawer with a pen that you like to write with and the postage that you would need to send them. If you're writing them personally, if you're writing them in your, um, in your home life, your personal life, your social life, keep that, that stationery that you like at home and a writing desk somewhere that you're likely to sit down and write. Keep it with some postage, a pen that you like to write with. And the, the likelihood that the next time it occurs to you that you would like to write a thank you note, that you actually do it, really goes up, up, up. If you have to walk to the supply closet or go to the post office or the drugstore to get a card, the likelihood that you're actually going to write that note starts to dive off a cliff. So give yourself a fighting chance. Get the materials prepared ahead of time so when that inspiration strikes, you can seize it. So those are my, my core, my basic tips on writing thank you notes, when to do it, if you've received a gift, if you've been a house guest for major career opportunities or um, op, uh, professional opportunities. In terms of the structure of the note, you've got that Mad Libs structure. And by all means, if my cousin Lizzie were here, she would give you a slightly different one. If you have one that you like, go with it. But that's one that I think you can just sort of plug in and work with. And finally, that you keep those materials on hand so that when the inspiration strikes, you're ready to seize it and send that note. So that's our opening tips. This is the How Do I series. My name is Daniel Post Senning. I'm a co-host of the Awesome Etiquette podcast and a co-author of Emily Post Etiquette 19th edition. My co-author on that book and my co-host of the podcast are Lizzie Post. And she will be back with us next week for the next episode of the How Do I series, which happens every Thursday afternoon. We produce it here on the Emily, at the, right in the offices of the Emily Post Institute with the help of my assistant Taylor Downs and my little... Uh, Poodle Raju, who's here. He's not in my lap at the moment. I'd hold him up and show him to you, but um, he's here also today. And now I want to turn over this episode to you. I want to take a few of your questions about thank you notes, as we often do in the second part of our show. The first question I want to respond to is, how late is too late to send a thank you note? I hear my grandfather's voice in my head in this moment, Bill Post. I called him Poppy, and he used to say, the best is the enemy of the good. And what he meant by that was, of course, the, the best thing is that you send it immediately within 24 hours of receiving that gift of coming home from that vacation. 
uh, from returning home from that interview. But just because you haven't done the thing that's the best doesn't mean you, it wouldn't be good to still send that note a couple days later. Uh, for wedding gifts, another time that people really think, oh, I have to send a thank you note for this, and you really do. Um, some people have in their mind the time frame of a year, but I don't like to put an end date on it. I think it, 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 it creates that mental space in your own mind to push it off until that deadline. If that deadline's really going to help you, if it's going to force you to spring into action, by all means, give it to yourself. But it's never too late. You can always still send that note. You can always express gratitude and show someone how much you care by putting pen to paper and sending that note. So best practice is within 24 hours. Um, I, I would say customarily you want to get it out and in the mail within a week. I, and, and, and that deadline can be helpful. Um, I think another way to think about it is you don't want the other person to be sitting there wondering if they're going to receive it. One of the, the core principles of all good etiquette is that you're taking into account other people's comfort, other people's mental well-being. And if someone's mailed you a gift, they're wondering, has it gotten there? How was it received? Did they appreciate it? I wonder if I'm going to hear from them. And before that wonder turns into concern, either that the gift wasn't well received or that you're not going to be meeting your social obligation to reply with a thank you note, you want to get that note into their hands. If you're talking about someone who's interviewed you for a position, if there's a fast track to the hiring process, you want to get that note to them within a couple days. So do it as soon as possible, but it's never too late. Next question, is it overkill to send a note after receiving the gift in person? It's not overkill. The, the, the degree of the social obligation goes down significantly, goes down dramatically. If you've had the opportunity to warmly, genuinely look someone in the eye and thank them in person, that's really the 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 most intimate form of thanks, the one that's offered in person. And the follow-up note, the follow-up note of thanks, I think is is an opportunity, but it's not as, as firm a social obligation. So it's not overkill, but I don't think you need to, to, to worry yourself as much if you don't respond to every gift that you receive with a thank you note, as long as you have had that opportunity to thank someone in person. I love this next question because it's about the, 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 the way the medium impacts the message. Is a phone call ever more appropriate than a thank you note? I think sometimes it might be. Sometimes there is something that, that there is a particular personal nature to where picking up the phone and letting someone hear the tone of your voice, hear the, the sincerity of your thanks um, through the tone of your voice is a really warm, uh, generous, and genuine way to offer thanks. I do think that it adds a whole layer of, of substance and, um, and, and there's a real, something very tangible about receiving that note that really sticks with someone, that leaves a lasting impression. So I think you want to think about how you want your thanks to be received and remembered. Sometimes an email thanks is the most appropriate thing. If someone's done something for you that's a small thing, they've sent you some article via email, just firing off a quick email thanks might be the exact proportional and correct thank you for that particular gesture. Sometimes a quick phone call is the exact proportional and reasonable response. It's, it's the way that you're going to deliver that thank you that's reasonable. If that little voice in your mind is saying, you know, this is something that deserves a handwritten thank you note, I say go ahead and do it. Usually that voice is coming from somewhere, and I think you want to honor it and you want to um, seize those opportunities when you feel inspired. Uh, next question. If you're staying at someone's house and give the host or hostess a gift, should you also send a thank you note after leaving? Absolutely. You sort of have a two-part responsibility as a house guest. One is that you show up with a little something in hand, that you, you bring a house gift, or you do something for your host over the course of your stay. Maybe you take everyone out to dinner on the Saturday night of a weekend visit or something like that. But then you're also going to follow up with a thank you note after you've left at the end of the weekend. So yes, there is a dual obligation there. The fact that you brought a gift doesn't exempt you from writing a thank you note after you leave. Um, I want to take a question that just came in. Can you close a thank you note with as ever? You could. It's, 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 it's a sort of, I, I, I see it used less frequently, but I, I, I follow the intent of what you're saying. You're saying something like, um, as always, uh, yours truly, something like that, as ever. Um, it, it, there, there might be a little bit of confusion in someone's mind. I would be a little careful about using it in a professional context or a context where I'm really shooting for um, a higher standard of formality. But informally, I think it's a little creative. Um, and I, I, I understand what you're saying there. 
Another question that we just received, is it necessary to send a thank you for a greeting card? N no, not necessarily. You might feel inspired. Some greeting cards are amazing. I've got, I got some birthday cards this year that absolutely blew me away. I couldn't throw them away. They sat out, they, they still are sitting on my table. Um, they, they just look incredible. They're amazing. They're works of art. And they're right on that edge of where the card itself almost has become a gift. But really, cards aren't gifts. And I'm not, I'm not going to worry about responding to a card that doesn't also include some sort of, um, some sort of extra gift, gift card or money or um, even Amazon store credit, something like that, where there's actually a gift that comes along with the card. The card itself doesn't require a thank you note. Another question that's a related question that we get all the time is, do I ever have to send a thank you note for a thank you note? And the answer is absolutely not. This, this does end somewhere. And oftentimes thank you notes are, um, we, we don't get them as often as we might think. Not everybody um, uh, feels this, uh, this impulse the way that maybe people did even a generation ago. And the, the instances where people receive thank you notes and they are so moved that they feel inspired to send a note themselves are, um, we, we, we hear about this. And I think maybe because I work at the Emily Post Institute, when I send thank you notes, sometimes I think people want to send a thank you for the thank you. They appreciate getting that. But we tell people really it's it's okay. You don't need to. There there is a place where where that can um, that thank you needs to be received well. Um, part of the whole process of expressing gratitude is 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 allowing that gratitude to be received. And sometimes that's our job. It's like not always saying it's no problem, it's nothing. Sometimes it's about saying you're welcome. It was my pleasure. And in some ways, just receiving that thanks is a good way to do that. So I think we can leave it there. I could go on and on about thank you notes all day. And in fact, it's one of our favorite topics here at the Emily Post Institute. I, I want to return to where we started today's talk. I think gratitude is so important. It's important in our relationships and it's important just for how we feel about ourselves. And having a lot of options about how we express gratitude, I think, is one of those life skills that, that really give us opportunities to, to be ourselves fully and, and to live satisfying lives. So um, I hope that I've encouraged you to write a thank you note the next time you feel inspired to do so. I hope we've given some tips about how to do it. Again, my name is Daniel Post Senning. This is the How Do I series produced here at the Emily Post Institute in Burlington, Vermont. I hope you will join us again in the future for our next talk on other topics. And my cousin Lizzie Post, my co-host on both this series and the Awesome Etiquette podcast, as well as my co-author on the Emily Post Etiquette 19th edition, sends her best. And you can send her uh, your best as well as she recovers from that stiff neck. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you at some point in the future. Take good care.